Hi, this is Fran with Stampendous. This is our watercolor series, week number 132. And we're going to do some very fun things, as you can see here, with the stamp set called On My Mind. And, uh, but first, I have a fun little surprise for us. We have a die set that creates a wonderful little gift wallet and has a place on the inside uh, to put a gift card and you can decorate it inside and out all different ways. There's quite a few dies in the set, for example, that give you uh, the little saying that's a gift for you. And the panel in here um, is also an interesting little shape by itself. But I got the idea that I would like to take uh, the die and by cutting it out of my watercolor paper, as you can see here, I cut a couple of them just going off the edge and run that through your die cutting. And then you're going to have that score line and that would be the exact um, top area of the wallet. But what we're gonna do uh, to paint on this, I'm going to cut it just slightly smaller uh, from that score line. I'm gonna come in about an eighth of an inch. It doesn't need much. And let's see, let's cut two of them here. Okay, so once we cut that away, you'll see that we can position this on the front and have a little bordered edge um, showing down at the bottom. Okay, so I've cut a couple of those and we're going to do a little watercolor on it. The watercolor paper is a bit heavy to use the entire panel for the gift wallet, but doing this little um, piece on the front can be very fun. So I tried a couple of things here and I started out, this one got a little bit busy, so I was doing a simpler one here. And let's just do a quick painting of this one and I'll hopefully finish up a few more to put them in the gallery. But it's a very fun way to um, get a nice little small scale watercolor here that can be very quick. So I think I'm going to, just in keeping this short, since this was a, wasn't a planned part of this video, my olive color green is a good match to the paper here okay so I'm going to do some washes in and behind all of this I'm going to leave some white I'm going to go in around the flowers don't you love it when I say what I'm going to do and then I do the other <laughs> around the flowers you can go over the leaves because this is a light green and I'm going to mix a little bit darker shade of an olive green just to add some depth here. I think leaving these daisies white would stand out quite nicely. I got a smudge down here so we're gonna have a dark leaf there <laughs> and a couple little dots. Okay so let's see we do yellow centers a little bit more shading here a couple more little dots. A little bit more of the dark green is really going to make my white daisies pop. And you could stop right there, but if we do a little bit of a blue or even a blue-gray, very light. Make sure I've got a tester strip here. Here we go. 
This will just add a little bit of interest. So there's a very fun, quick little original to add to your gift card holder. And you could stamp any number of different flowers to coordinate with whatever um, print or colors of your, um, your gift wallet to have a cohesive look. So coming back to the stamps here that was part of the plan for the day, we've got uh, a wonderful Audrey looking lady here. And I want to give you a number of different ideas of how to make the most of it. And you can see each time I do it, I come up with something different. But I want to give you a couple of tips and then we'll paint this one uh, to show you all the way through. This I did for the cover of the October uh, Flippy catalog. So as I've suggested before, when you have a new set, and particularly when they're a la carte pieces like this, it's probably helpful for you to do some stamping on scrap paper and kind of get a feel for um, simple ways to use the stamps and then uh, more expanded ideas. So I haven't had time to paint all of these different ones, but I thought that showing you this um, in this stage would be helpful for you to develop your ideas. So this would be the simplest one. But I wanted to make a point of, if you make a finished card, you don't want the head just floating in the middle of space here. <laughs> so uh, one option is simply to crop your paper, you know, at that bottom edge and make the interest what's happening up above her head. Um, in this one, you can see that simply by stamping a little flower down in front along the edge of the neckline um, will be a real simple way to solve that problem. And in other ones, you could do a larger flower, and either way, you can choose to just crop the paper at that point. So then I got to playing with this idea and multiple faces here. And of course, you can do the hair, all different colors, and, and have a grouping here. So with this one, I stamped the faces first, going off the edges. Then I filled it in with flowers, and I used a little bit of my uh, masked pieces where I wanted an overlap and that allowed me to fill in all the way around. On this one you can see each one has a simple grouping of flowers and if you do the masking I think it gives you a more interesting look where some flowers are tucked in behind other ones. And then since we've been playing with uh, slim card formats. I thought it would be kind of fun and playful to do one with all of the butterflies. And again, um, where you have the unfinished area here, you can simply, um, you know, do some paint some darker colors um, where it connects underneath butterflies. And on this one, I thought I would try and see if I could make a funny effect of them uh, coming out of her brain here. <laughs> I tried a couple other things where I wanted a simpler approach and I actually used uh, the curve of the balloon and some masking to create the top of the head. And I will make a point of saying if your the top of the head was as shallow as this, it wouldn't look right. You need to get some height to it. So that got me thinking about some other ideas and I actually did this one where I thought, you know, if the bouquet of flowers was in the front um, and you had her peeking out from behind, uh, that would be fun. <clears throat> and then I got to thinking some more about hats so that if this looked, she's not bald, but... <laughs> If we wanted that to be a close-fitting hat, what would be the easiest way of doing that? And I'm trying to give you options where you don't have to draw anything. So I went and found some oval circle, um, some oval dies that I had. And I found that if I cut um, a, an arced line, I could create 
a hat with a circle and an oval. And this one isn't really all that big. So if you want to go crazy, here you can play around. I've taken my vellum tracing paper and I could study how big of an oval or a circle would work. And this might let you make your own pattern. Maybe you've got some stencils that are that big. I didn't have ones that were quite what I wanted. But anyway, creative ideas. And so, so in case you want to try your hand at some fun hats, I'll show you a couple more steps that I've figured out. From my tracing paper, I was able to turn it over and create a carbon paper out of it that allowed me to position it onto some green paper and trace through it and including that cut line. And then you can uh, cut this out. And I moved this part away so that I'll cut a little bit further as the pieces to overlap. So that's what I've done on this one. And with this one, I stamped on the paper and then um, I stamped uh, on the watercolor paper, cut along the edge and the crown of the head so that I could slip uh, my hat around her ears and put it on her head like that. And with this one, I cut it out uh, completely with my scissors and then added the hat and this was the larger circle now that I look at it I might cut it down to let's see the smaller circle but anyway and with scrap paper I've stamped some extra flowers that I will cut out as well Even, even in stamping this one, I played around with scrap paper to see how it would best fit the format of my slim card using it as a vertical. So this is three and a quarter by eight and one quarter, and this will fit on a card uh, very nicely and still fit in my business envelope. So a couple of tips. I generally, uh, we're going to stamp the whole thing so that you can see the progression of things here. And let's see, on this one I didn't do any masking. So I think it's good to show you um, what tips to go, you know, work the best with that. And of course if you want to do some more masking, um, you can get more overlap of your images. But we're, on this one we'll spend our time painting and we'll fast forward the stamping here. I'm going to go a little bit lower on my card to start with. I don't generally do things smack dab in the middle and it might be more interesting to have things a little bit more asymmetrical. That's me. But now by starting from the face and working my way up I'm keeping my flowers close together and I can turn them different directions to where you want a pretty close um, cluster, particularly so that you don't have to worry about uh, what becomes of the top of the head. It's going to be hidden under your mini flowers and that's the easiest way to do this. There's a couple of little sprigs in the set that are nice fillers and curve around in different directions. Okay, stamping a little, little bit further down um, gives me less of an issue of creating a shoulder or deciding how big that area should be. And so, and I have the biggest cluster of flowers here and then I lighten it and go smaller as things go up to the top of the card. 
So think a little bit about your composition and don't be afraid of going over the edges. Uh, you don't want everything just smack dab in the middle. It'll be more interesting and dynamic a layout this way. With this tall card, I have trouble keeping everything in view for you here. I'm going to paint the flesh tones on the face first. If I were to paint the face and not be happy with it, I'd be sorry to have spent time on all the rest of the flowers. So let's just jump right in and we'll do the face first. If you weren't happy with that, you could just start over on the other side. But we've done the flesh tones now several times on the hands and the face isn't that much more difficult and it's not that big of an area. So we're going to come in here and get a soft tan brown kind of color. Let's see, this is looking quite reddish. Make sure we get more of the yellow. And we're going to add some water here with our needle tip. And move some of this into this compartment here. And we definitely want to use our test strip. Okay, that looked quite dark, but because I've got that much water to it, this should work fine. Yeah, it's looking dark here, but it's going to go lighter, so I'm going to continue with my wash. I want darker color above the eyes. I want some darker color around the nose. Okay, that's already lightened quite a bit. And then I want to add some rosy cheeks. So I decided we're going to lift color from that area and maybe lift some from the nose because that's what's coming forward would be the lightest. And then we're going to get some of the rose with a lot of water so that it's light. And we're going to put this in while the rest of it is still slightly damp. That looks really strong at the moment. That's okay. We're going to lift with a damp brush. And it's nice. We still have some of this mixed. So it's we know it's the same shade. I'm going to darken up under the hairline and on the ear on this side. And this side of the face going a bit darker would be it makes sense if my light's coming from this side. Okay, that pink is certainly much lighter than over here. It was kind of overdone. I'm going to risk coming back in with just a little bit more rouge here on the cheeks. <laughs> the lipstick and other uh, parts would do well to wait until it dries. I suppose we could have added some color of eyeshadow, but for now I'll just go with making it a bit darker. Okay? Okay, I think that'll work. Okay, so while that area is drying, we'll go back to our flowers and tuck this underneath just so you can be sure and see the areas that I'm painting. Okay, so let's start with a light rose pink. And again, I'm just doing some loose washes. Maybe we'll let this one be an even lighter color. Taking my wet brush and kind of going around that, okay. And then we have sort of a scarlet rose combination here for our poppy. And most of these flowers you can use your imagination to switch colors and make them be all sorts of different color flowers. The red and pink together is a strong combination, but I'm going to lighten that one a little bit. And to pull the two together, I'm going to add some deeper color of that same and a scarlety color to the center of this one. Uh, for our lavenders or magentas, we've got rose, rose with the marine blue 
should give me a, a beautiful magenta and purple range of colors. And while we've got that color, you could see down here, I simply painted between these flowers to create the illusion of a beautiful dress that you don't have to define. And you could just think sort of a, of a triangle here of creating, I'm gonna create just a little bit of definition there. So that's really all that's needed. Kind of liking all of these different shades of color. I may do less yellow uh, just to kind of keep this color scheme a little bit more unusual with the pink and purpley colors. So do a light lavender. These little blossoms sort of look like plum blossoms or something. Well, it's nice to get some blues into the color scheme here. with a nice clean brush I'm ready to do some yellows and your eye is certainly going to go to the yellow as it's complementary to our purpley colors. So here I could do blonde or brunette or redhead. The black certainly gives a lot of contrast to just pull your eye in. But let's do a dark brunette. I have a pre-mixed color here. Let's see how this looks. It's very dark. Let's add that our brown area here and lighten it a bit. Maybe an auburn color would be kind of fun. Okay, so I intentionally left very little space in between, which makes it easier to fill in a little bit of wispy on the edge and decide how far up we would come to reach the top of her head to look normal. Let's see. Probably going a little bit further than I should here, but okay, I think that'll work. Then I'm gonna lighten it a little bit in here for some highlight. She needs some lipstick. A 
red with a little bit of scarlet would work nicely. Okay, on this one, I did a lot with the soft little dots to kind of fill in. On this one, I did a little bit better job of bringing everything in pretty close together by starting here and kind of working my way up. So maybe I will just do a little bit with green this time. And I'll mix a little bit of an olive green color. Sure, it's not too dark. Okay, so like here where my stems don't quite connect, the little dots are kind of a fun look. Okay, oh, and her eyes. I mustn't forget her eyes. We'll do her brown eyes. With just the very tip of your brush, and a little bit of color. Okay, so with those tips, you should be able to try any number of the other combinations that we did, where we uh, could have butterflies and flowers and all sorts of things. Uh, that are on her mind <laughs> from simple to all of the friends. <laughs>